This is New Cap News with Nerman Esau. Good evening. Well, there's no hiding from it. Cold weather is hitting hard all across the prairies and even in the United States. Now, these deep freeze temperatures can came quickly and while many are hoping they will leave just as fast. And cannot Vate spoke with a meteorologist today to see when residents will get somewhat of a reprieve and also see how some in the border city are coping. After days of wind chills below minus 40 here in the region, these are words you'll want to hear. Look here, we're looking at uh, a bit of a recovery in the next number of days. Uh, Thursday, looking for a high of minus 9 and uh, maybe even minus 4 by Saturday, sort of the long-range forecast. It's been cold and windy lately, but it's safe to say Lloyd Minster hasn't had it the worst. The freezing rain episode that went through much of southern Ontario there uh, before, around the Christmas uh, break there, uh, that was certainly a major thing and still feeling the impacts of that and some of the storms going through uh, eastern Canada, Atlantic Canada, uh, Nova Scotia and, and New Brunswick and uh, Newfoundland. So they're sort of getting the precipitation and temperatures that they're very much unaccustomed to. We took to the streets to see how people in the city are toughing it out. Multi-layers. I got about four different layers underneath uh, my jacket here because I have to go out for work and in this nice little weather. What else can we do? Just bundle up very well and, uh, you know, stay indoors all the time. I work indoors anyways, but it's so hard for the kids, like, waiting in a bus stop. Yeah, that's the hardest thing. Got to stay inside with the kids, pretty much, waiting for it to warm up so we can go sledding and actually enjoy winter. <laughs> Someone is suffering with uh, hot weather and we are with cold, so it's okay. It's New Year. We have to say, okay, it's good. It's Canada. What do you expect? According to Environment Canada, we're seeing temperatures around 5 degrees colder than average. And will this trend continue? Well, Kulak says that's hard to predict. We do not have a very significant El Nino or La Nina this winter. And so those are one of the driving mechanisms for our, our climate. And when those things are not really present, it becomes a very low skill forecast to put out a seasonal forecast. But we are left with hope for a brighter future. Keep prepared and keep your chin up, so to speak, because uh, some warm weather is coming. Anna Kanafate, Newcap News. Meanwhile, these freezing temperatures have proven deadly for one St. Paul resident. RCMP there say a 21-year-old resident was found dead after being exposed to the elements. His body was found on New Year's Day inside a storage shed on a property located on 51st Avenue. Now, police say the man was at a party a few houses over when they believe he left without proper winter clothes. It's also believed he was trying to find somewhere warm and wound up inside the storage shed. Now, he later died of hypothermia. The victim's name is not being released. RCMP are investigating after a train and a semi-truck collided just west of the city early this afternoon. A uh, truck came up to the crossing here on Highway or Range Road 14. He stopped at the stop sign. He started to come across and uh, wasn't able to make it across. The train came and it just uh, hit the back of the trailer and knocked it into the ditch. No one was injured in the collision and police don't know just yet if icy roads played a role in the crash. We're still gathering statements, uh, but all I know is, like I said, the truck did stop and that's been confirmed. He tried to make it across the tracks. Why he didn't get all the way across, that's yet to be determined. The road was open within half an hour. Well, last week we brought you the story of an Edmonton man killed in Central America as he was working as a missionary. Well, New Cap News has found out the victim, Brian Townsend, had ties to the border city. Pastor Robert Pohl of the Lloydminster Seventh-day Adventist Church says he knew Brian for the last six years and he adds Brian was very passionate about the project he was working on in Belize. Brian was uh, probably a resource personnel is the way I would describe him to uh, in, invite him into the church to um, you know give little mission statements and to encourage our, our members to become involved in uh, short-term mission projects. Pastor Paul was shocked to hear what happened, but says finding his body will give closure to the family in a way. Well, initially when I heard that he was missing, uh, I said, this is not a good sign. And um, then when they uh, related the fact that they would found uh, some blood in the area, I said, this is not going to turn out well. Well, I think that what we need to do is continue to remember their family and to do what we can to encourage them. And Police continue to investigate Brian Townsend's death. Three suspects are being sought. 
Well, there are more than 300,000 temporary foreign workers in Canada since December 2013. That according to the National Conference Board. And as of January 1st, the Canadian government put in new policies into effect, cracking down on employers hiring temporary foreign workers. I cannot wait has the details. Government of Canada, they want to make sure that the um, uh, available, available jobs, it will be for Canadians to be first in line. One of the changes the government plans to make is doing workplace inspections whenever they want without a warrant and blacklisting employers that don't measure up. Employers will have to provide the right documentation in compliance with the Temporary Foreign Workers Program for up to six years. And government officials will do interviews with the foreign workers about their working conditions. As well, no more foreign strippers are allowed. And it's not just about giving Canadian residents a first shot at the jobs. They will be tough enough that to make sure that uh, foreign workers will be protected from abuse and exploitation. So abuse may be uh, physically, sexually, financially from employers and co-workers. Even before the changes, Anthony Reyes says it's not easy filling positions at their store. I need to hire more workers, but uh, we still have to get the, the whole process like getting LMOs and the, then the work permits and then will take us uh, a little bit time to to have the process because it will be it will be some of them are foreign workers right. Reyes says hiring employees okay. from other countries helps them cover all of the hours the store needs to run. The foreign workers are more flexible I mean they can fill up whatever <laughs> big can position in that day. We really prefer to have uh, the foreign worker work in our company, but um, as the government, I mean, mandated, you cannot just have all foreign workers working in your company because there are lots of Canadians who are applying for some, some works too in Canada. As a temporary foreign worker himself, Emmanuel Palayo says it wasn't easy getting a job in Canada even before the changes. There's a lot of uh, competition like we have a uh, lots of Filipinos here in in Canada, so it, it, it's not that easy to have a uh, peer applications of like or coming here to Canada. And if you want more information on the temporary foreign worker program, go to www.canada.ca. Anna Canafate, New Cap News.